Hello, my SOC universe, and I thought uh, since this is a, a rather long and a little bit unusual video, I need to record a little open. Uh, I have been toying around with the idea of interviewing fellow co uh, collectors, you know. Once you get into the community, you get to know quite a few people. And so I had a few people in mind, but I always thought I, I had to pull it off a little bit because, you know, the logistics behind it. Uh, and I still want to do more of these. However, by lucky coincidence, I was contacted by a fellow YouTuber and, of course, fellow collector. His name is Ricardo. Uh, you can find him on Instagram, on his uh, page, and, of course, on his own YouTube channel, Middleman Football, which I would urge you to please subscribe to, because not only is Ricardo a really nice guy, as you will see now in our chat, but also he has quite some nice jerseys as well, so uh, well worth your time. So uh, he contacted me uh, now, I think it's almost two weeks ago, um, and asked me, oh, when this post, almost three weeks, uh, and asked me whether I want to do a chat with him. I said, of course I want to do that. I'm just not so sure about my internet connection. And yes, I dropped out twice uh, during our chat. Uh, but we managed and we got quite uh, a, a sweet talk that I want to give you almost in its entirety with just minimum edits uh, out there. Um, I, it's important to put the date on this one. It's the 6th of December we made this one. So, uh, if, you know, for references to um, uh, events that were happening, we were talking a little bit about the previous weekend. I think there's also been a little bit M M M MLS being now the MLS Cup. We know that New York City FC won, which probably will be Ricardo will be very happy about. Uh, also, there is a considerable time difference because I'm here in Austria, he's sitting in California, so that's also an interesting part. So, yeah. A uh, really nice chat that I want to give you as much as possible. Uh, it was, I had so much fun. I had to actually cut it short. Uh, I think we could have gone for another two hours, which might, might have been a little bit too much of a uh, video. But in any case, please enjoy and please make sure to subscribe to his channel. He's well worth, it's well worth your time. So without further ado, ah yeah, and the footage that I got from him is it's from an Instagram chat. So it might be a little bit grainy and I decided for the YouTube format, you know, it was uh, vertically and I wanted to put it side by side. So uh, to kind of fit on the phone, but you know, don't use it on a big screen because I think the footage might be a little bit too grainy. So that's the only caveat in there. But now please enjoy our chat. Oh, wow. Love your jersey, man. For you, for you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, no. I... <laughs> Although I realized that your, um, you must, uh, when I look at your, your, your teams, it was a horrible weekend for you. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. Roma lost, oh. Marseille lost, Gladbach lost. <laughs> Gladbach. Oh my God! I saw, I saw that second, I saw that second half of that game, and yeah, it's to forget. It's to forget. Yeah. No, I, I I saw just the highlights. I saw six nil. What the <laughs> is going on? <laughs> A month ago, yeah, I, five and five nil. <laughs> I I I got a little late on the game, but I checked my my phone for the scoreboard and it was six nil at halftime and I was like, what? Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. So, yeah. I mean, I yeah. do my work, so I was not too unhappy about it, but the six nil is something. I mean, I, I listened to interviews afterwards and the Freiburg coach himself, he, he looked like he had just lost. Yeah. He was so, I mean, I cannot be happy when the, the others that don't even show up. No, it's a night for for to forget. I yes, say. It's a night to forget. But um, yeah, uh, welcome. Thank you for taking the time for this. I appreciate it. You're very um, welcome. Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been following you on YouTube for a while now. You have great stuff on there, and um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Um, I see you have a great setup in the back there. Real Betis, Sporting Lisboa. Yes, Barca. I you. Did. This is from my La Liga Liga Portugal re, uh, review that I shot about a four, three or four hours ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But will not go live until tomorrow. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, okay, that's good. I mean, it's uh, all shot and edited. I have three and two I do tomorrow, England and Italy. Uh, but the upload time where we live, it takes me three hours at least to upload a video. Oh, and wow. 
no one else should do anything. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. That's great. I like uh, before we get talking about jerseys and stuff. I just want to say that you are consistently uploading and you consistently have, um, you know, videos up. I I appreciate that. That's I respect that too. That's that's amazing. Yeah. It's I don't know how you always say it that especially the stuff where I review the games. And now, especially in Log Log, it's kind of my therapy because I need to talk about it because I'm so passionate and I watch a lot. Um, and while I can share some stuff with my wife and, you know, I can get my daughters interested in, yeah, okay, let's look at this jersey. Would Papa like this one? <laughs> and so <laughs> it is not yeah, yeah. really, yeah, the same thing. And uh, now with my colleagues, you know, I, I honestly, I hate uh, chatting. I like face-to-face -face much, uh, talking much uh, more. I agree. Yeah. I completely lost that. And I, I think when I started it, I actually did it because I had this horrible, com horrible, I mean, I know there are people that have more commutes, but uh, where I live, I always have to cross the Danube River. And ah. when I moved, they just took down a bridge because it was old and were rebuilding a new one. And it was just horrible because there's only two bridges and everyone from north of the bridge needs to cross south and vice versa. So a commute that should only take me like 20 minutes always was 40, 45 minutes. And then I said, well, instead of me getting all bent out of, out of shape, I just take a camera, mm -hmm. put it on the dashboard and talk about soccer. Yeah. For my first few videos, this is exactly what I did to keep myself calm. I and mean, there, there are even a few where I'm cursing at the traffic around me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. That's um, it. And yeah, but now I do this. I always say it's my therapy because all of those thoughts that I have, I mean, and, and I'm by far not telling everything that I'm saying. It just needs yeah, to yeah. out. And so I need to do this in a way. So Good, good. Awesome. Yeah, there's a quick question. Like, what's your YouTube? Um, someone's uh, asking what's your my YouTube My Soccer on? Universe is the YouTube channel. Yeah, there you go. Cultures, My Soccer Universe. Check them out. Um, he has great content. He uploads consistently. Uh, and I'm sure he, he looks forward to hearing you interact with him. All right. So um, I did get a couple of jerseys to wow. kind of showcase and discuss. I don't know. <laughs> I, see the, I see the rainbow jersey from last year. <laughs> yeah. So well, one of the jerseys I got a while back is this Pescara one. Yes. Um, it's Irrea, the sponsorship. And uh, I got it because it was so different from what you typically see nowadays. And it was like a limited edition. And they let a, a local fan, his name was Luigi. Exactly. They, they let a lot of fans come up with the design and the best one got to be placed. I on love the, the design where they had the C and there was one hand holding up the COVID-19 sign and the other one the middle finger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was seriously consider considering getting this one. And I was mm -hmm. really going back and forth. And then I, um, I kind of made myself an ideal. I want to get only jerseys that I can use also as a background for my channel. Mm -hmm. Jorge Pescara will not make it very soon to Serie A. <laughs> so yeah. but I know my girls are totally, I mean, the dolphin, the rainbow, this is almost anything that yeah. they totally love. So I, it would have been nice. But then I said, uh, for me, not, it might be a step too far and I should maybe get something that I either really would love or that I can uh, use in my channel. This was kind of my thought, but I was agonizing whether I should get it or whether, whether I should get it. So I'm glad that you have it. That's... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it did take a while to get it because I'm from the States and yeah. I bought it from Classic Football Shirts in England. Yes. They, they came up with some in stock, so I was able to order through them. And um, it took me a while to, to get it. And when they announced this on Classic Football Shirts, they said pre-order now. And I was like, what? You can pre-order jerseys these days? Yes. Or maybe through them. But I was just yeah. like pre-ordering. Like that, that was insane to me. I, I always felt that was just for video games to pre-order something. Yeah, yeah. And the idea of pre-ordering jerseys was like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, they're going absolutely crazy these days with some special editions. I mean, I I hated like uh, what Napoli came, came out with the Maradona shirts. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the moment I saw it, they already sold out. I mean, not that I would buy them, but if it was 150 euros, I, right. 
I'm totally right. out, but um, yeah, the pre-ordering is something that I, it needs to be something special. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, sure. this one, I will, and it was not that uh, expensive. I think they still have it actually because I. Yeah. I got my Black Friday oh, yeah. classic football shirts today. <laughs> and All I'm right. looking at that one, but I, I still haven't unpacked it yet. So uh, there is no, I saw that the Pescado shirt is still available and I was still tempted, but I wanted, again, I took something that I really wanted for my channel. Uh, and it was kind of, um, and then also figuring out because import costs now that uh, Great Great Britain has left the EU. Yeah, I figured yes. it out. I mean, if I order, if I take a slow shipping service, it comes via the mail, then I only have to pay five euros plus maybe 20% uh, import tax where it includes the shipping cost. And now the, right, right. the tricky thing is with the exchange rate, I knew I have to spend over 100 pounds to get free shipping. Oh, I see. So I tried to pile on, but I cannot exceed 150 euros. So there's a very narrow, tiny window because 150 euros is where I had to pay customs. And so I was yeah, trying, yeah. Uh, let's see. Today it comes, I had to pay nothing. <laughs> Which was completely, Great. I had it all, I thought, I have to pay 32 euros extra. That's what I computed. And today mm -hmm. my wife says, Roland, your package came. And I said, yeah, and how much? Uh -huh. No, it doesn't want anything. <laughs> it was kind of, what? <laughs> So if I would have known that, I said, wow. if I would have known that, I would have added another one, uh, just to be. Well, yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Now I I feel for you on that whole, uh, you know, paying extra on top of uh, the shipping from England because I I can imagine how expensive that can get, especially if you buy a couple of more uh, jerseys on top of that just to make. The free shipping, you know. So, yes, yes. Yeah, well, I, I feel you for that. It's, it's a bummer. <laughs> let me show you one jersey. That one back there, I, I got. I had the opening video I have today. It's the latest one that I added mm -hmm. from a fellow collector. It's Real Mallorca mm -hmm. from seventeen eighty. I think it's such a cool Mallorca shirt, which I never thought I would be able to pick up. It's a really yeah, yeah. I, I saw that you picked it up um, through Instagram with the local uh, Austrian jersey exactly. seller. Uh, we, and, 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 and it was kind of funny because you, we, we go to this second-hand uh, site and sometimes I get into it, they have their own chat there and sometimes I get, uh, you know, a back and forth, but this guy immediately said, and if you want to see my collection, it's here. And he wanted that I maybe stop by and said, you know, Avian Lockdown B, it's a little bit too far, far, far away from, from now. I cannot really, really easily do it. So he sent it over, but then we kind of got chatting and I said, you know, I, he was the first of those sales that said, I have a YouTube channel. You can watch this. And he showed me his mm. uh, jersey. It's pretty cool. Uh, and he's, and, and he was says he was selling it because I think um, he only wants to have jerseys that have name and number on the back. So he's selling a few off. He also has a few to sell, where there was a really nice 95, 96 Juve shirt that if uh, I... Juve shirt? With the Which sun, one? That if I wanted, it could be mine, but I um, have to see if uh, I... For sure. If I will pull the trigger on that one, let's put it whatever. But it, it, it's one, it will not be cheap, but it is something that I'm definitely... I mean, I would like, rather have the away jersey than the home jersey. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, yeah, I I want to showcase the other one I brought out for, yes. for the for the talk today. Um, this is my uh, Boca Juniors jersey. I think it's from the 2017, 2018. Uh -huh. um, it has it has the Rossi in the back. That's uh, when he made that transfer over to That's... Boca because he wanted to play at the Bombonera. Yes, and uh, being a Roma supporter and seeing the Rossi make that jump, I was like, I got to get myself a Boca kit now with his name on it. And luckily enough, <laughs> it was, it was it's a wonderful collection to add. And um, like something like this, I hardly put on. I hardly wear it because I feel like it's really special. 
um, but I, I hope to, to wear it soon enough, this mm -hmm. one. Uh, do you have any Boca kits? No, I have, I have uh, also, I, I would want to have Boca, to be honest, but I made a, make a conscious choice not to open the, how to say, the uh, out of Europe can. <laughs> oh, right, right. That's a can of worms that I probably will not be able to close again. I, I mean, this, I'm, I'm, I want to get the national teams like my one of my goals for next year is to have for every team at the World Cup have a jersey. Oh wow! Okay, which is not too far. I'm not too far off. I probably need to add some Asian ones. Africa, mm -hmm. whoever qualifies, I'm already covered, unless the Democratic Republic of Congo qualifies. Europe, I think I got everything. It is basically in South America. I think I'm also very well. So it's basically North America and Asia. I have U.S. jerseys. I have Australia jerseys. So, do, do you have a Qatar jersey? No, no, no. That, okay. that is one that I saw. I think a year or so ago, uh, I saw one from Burda on the second hand site. Well, mm -hmm. double mm -hmm. L, and I kept it like in my saved items list. Yeah. It kind of, you know, it's better than if I get this, you know, uh, template Nike shirt with a cutter crest on there. And I think uh, in summer someone bought it and I was a little bit, eh, but you know, it, for uh, Asian, uh, Asian Georgians and for some reason Mexico is, uh, uh, you know, anything CONCACAF is really hard to get by. I mean, US uh, is not a problem. Uh, but Asian jerseys, I mean, Japan, you can get, but they're never cheap. I've never saw a Japan jersey under 60 euros, which to me is a mm. little shame because I, there are a few that I really like. And I have a good mm. friend I went to school with. She's originally from Japan. And I always said, it's kind of a shame that I don't have a jersey from, because I have, I have a close, no, not a close tie, but I have a tie to Japan. Uh, sim the similar, uh, I don't know why I don't have yet a Mexico shirt. I mean, I was living in the U.S. I mean, getting a Mexico shirt was kind of, yeah, why don't I have one? <laughs> it was it's something. Hey, well, you know what? Um, I'll try to help you get a Mexico jersey. I could probably get one, pick it up out here, and then I'll just, you know, I'll get in contact with you, and uh, I can yeah. ship one out for you, and you can have one. <laughs> that, 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 that would be awesome. From where, uh, where are you calling me, by the way? What's that? From where are you calling me? You said. Oh, yeah, I'm from the states in the state of California. No, for uh, but, but where in Cali where, where in California? Uh, San Diego. San Diego. Ah, I have a good school. I have a school friend of mine is living in San Diego. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. wow, that's great. So nice. I've, I've visited there twice. Yeah, 2008 and 2012. I've been in San Diego. Uh, well, it's been some time then, huh? Yes, yes. Uh, it was the first time in December where basically I spent 10 days there. And six of the, those days it was raining, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is not safe. Uh, yeah, no, unfortunately, you did get some rain down there. <laughs> yeah. So now uh, he was living in Carlsbad at the time, and now he's kind of a uh, little, uh, he moved, and I, I was the first guest in his new house, uh, uh, close. It's a little bit inland from La Jolla. That's how, uh, how much I know. Oh, yeah? Yes. That's funny you say that, because uh, I'm out here in San Diego. I work in La Jolla. Okay, but I I kind of stationed out here, kind of closer to the downtown area. Okay, yeah, but yeah. Like I I work in La Jolla, so um, cool. it's funny that you that you know it. <laughs> uh, that's also one of the genesis for this channel is that the second time I was in San Diego. I mean, I'm a, a statistician by statistician by trade, and there was this huge stats conference in San Diego in mm -hmm. 2012. And I had written an article on kind of reviewing the performances of the 2010 World Cup of the teams. And they invited me on an e-talk there, babe. Basically, I had an e-poster where I was presenting. And you stand the uh, presentation kind of in interactive prepared. And you stay there for three hours. And okay. So many, I, this was, I mean, I have been giving talks and it's mostly, yeah, I give a talk, there's one question, da, da. I was for three hours engaged with everyone there. This was wow. the best experience ever. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that was happening in San Diego, so. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Well, if you ever are in town, I would love to, you know, yes, my shoot friend, you out and have a, a talk. Friend, 
telling me that we should come and visit uh, at some time, but you know, the, the world has to get normal again. Yeah, of course. And um, hopefully one of these days I can go out to Austria and, and visit you. <laughs> you just have to tell me. I can, can help you with that for sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so let me go on to another jersey really quick just to keep this going. Um, I don't know if you follow Major League Soccer enough, but uh, very nice. here is uh, very nice New York shirt. City. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the New York City Football Club has reached uh, the final here in MLS. They're ah. playing the Portland Timbers. Okay. Um, so it kind of goes hand in hand with that now. But uh, has Pirlo in the back from his time there. Um, luckily enough, when he came to visit LA against the Galaxy, I was able to uh, have him sign a jersey of mine. It's an Italy national jersey. Wow. Uh, he was walking and he signed for it. He signed it for me, and that was amazing because Pirlo was right in front of me. <laughs> but uh, I'm a huge fan of Italian football, Italian players, and uh, Pirlo and MLS. I had to get it, you know. I'm a Milan fan, even though when he moved to Juve, mm -hmm. I still, I'm, I, he's one mm -hmm. of those, that he, I love this type of player. Elegant, uh, playing it from the deep. Uh, yes. Oh, I think you're having a little bit connection issues, Roland. Let me see. Give me a second, guys. It's gonna have to be his connection. He might have to boot back out and come back in, but uh, we'll see. Hey, you kind of had a little uh, connection issue there. Yes, absolutely. I I apologize for that. That was no, no, you're fine. But yeah, you were saying about Pirlo. Yes, I mean he was he was one of my favorite players. I really like the way he's playing. So elegant, uh, not hurried, and uh, as well. I mean. He got us two Champions Leagues. Uh, he at least helped there. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed watching Pirlo play for Milan. And um, I thought he had a great 2006 World Cup. Yes. Um, when he made that move to Juve for free, I, I felt like, well, you know, maybe he's not going to play as much. Um, but under Conte, he was just pivotal for that squad. And... I yeah. feel like he even picked up his game more. Yeah. Like the irony is that me that Allegri at Milan didn't have a use for him anymore because he didn't mm -hmm. fit in his style, mm -hmm. and then Allegri takes him to another Champions League final for Juve, which is kind of yeah. Mm, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. But he was really in this last uh, run. He was not a, a big player anymore. He was kind of a afterthought, which I always found it. Yeah, this is one of those transfers that I know it's not the main reason, but this was a trajectory where you went like this and Milan went like this. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then that that transition kind of kicked off the whole dominance of Juventus for Serie A for like yeah. nine, ten years. But Fan um, Fan Lava even say that it wasn't necessarily Pirlo himself, but when Pirlo joined Milan from Inter. Mm. Mm -hmm. That was another one. This was, uh, I think this was a year or two before they won the Champions League in 2003. I don't know exactly when he did he join, but this was definitely one of those where, yeah, Milan was the clear winner of the transfer and Inter never recovered from that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love to see Pirlo play, uh, especially in that diamond formation under Ancelotti, Kaká, Rui Costa, mm -hmm. Catuso, and he sat right behind. Uh, yeah, that and Mila, I thought he was great, wonderful player. And like I said, when he went to Juve, I felt like, okay, well, maybe he'll come off the bench and he'll, mm -hmm. but no, no, no. He... totally dominant. And I still uh, love his penalty against England in the shooter in 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah someone made a reference to that just now. <laughs> entire shoe shooter. I mean, this is such a classic Pillow moment. I loved him to beats for that. <laughs> yeah, no. What can you expect? Nothing less from Pirlo, huh? Yeah, exactly. It was just uh, great. Uh, but great that that is on. I actually I think I never saw Pirlo play. It was uh, in Euro 2008. I had tickets for the quarterfinal Spain against Italy. Mm -hmm. 
and Gattuso and Pirlo both were suspended for that game. Oh. And it was kind of, I mean, yeah, there was Del Piero. This was, uh, if you watch the lineup of that uh, as, uh, against Spain, I mean, it ended in nil-nil Spain, thoroughly dominant and deserving to go through. But I, but Italy was robbed of its heart in the middle. There was, I mean, I, I kind of felt, yeah, okay, great. Um, but with Pirlo and Gattuso, I think it would have been a, at least a bit more competitive matchup than it ended up being. And yeah, it's that match also taught me that it, I think I paid a hundred euros for that uh, because it was Spain, Italy it was world champions against the tournament favorites. It was in Vienna, as so only two hour ride from here. Well, that's right. Yeah, it was in Austria. I forgot. It's in exactly. Ukraine, Austria. So, right? um, that was cool, but the game, it was so muggy. Nil, nil. At least we got a penalty shoot, shoot up, but I said, okay, these were the most... Uh, I've never wasted 100 euros for more <laughs> because the game was not worth it. And, I, uh. <laughs> and at that time, I mean, I love soccer, but at that time I was uh, still going also regularly to concerts and I made the decision, okay, if I pay 100 bucks, I'd rather go to a concert of a band that I like because yeah. the point, the chances of being disappointed are rather slim. No. Worst, worst yes. game, I mean, come on. And then I see, for instance, uh, at the Premier League, I think when Everton uh, played Liverpool last weekend, after 20 minutes, they're starting to walk out. And I'm sure they paid more for that game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a waste of money. <laughs> yeah. I love going I mean, to games, but, I, but you, I, I don't want to spend that much any, any, any anymore. I mean, it's... Well, it, it, I hear you. I agree. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stick with MLS and uh, yeah. looking forward. Look at this Inter Miami home jersey for oh, the 2019, nice. 20, oh, 2020 season, I should say. Mm -hmm. It's by Adidas, too. It's very nice. Um, more, more and more clubs are becoming uh, established here in MLS. And yeah. uh, they have, I think, up to like 29 or 30 teams already here. Um, as you know, this project is spearheaded by David Beckham and everything. But uh, uh, how aware or how often do you follow MLS? Uh, when I was living in America, I was occasionally watching and I always watched the final. Now I lost a little bit track of MLS, to be honest. Uh, but I, I listened to quite a few podcasts and there is... I think it's called Call of Sight on, you know, on, on the ESPN feed. And they usually mention a little bit MLS. So this comes out on a Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. So I get mm -hmm. the most what's happening in MLS. Oh, for sure. I get a okay. little bit of that in the world, you know, the Conquer Car, Cook of Region. Uh, but it's not... I Actually, I could watch MLS on the streaming service that I have. But it's always at times where either there's something more interesting or I'm asleep. Mm. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say, you're, you're probably, you know, asleep half of the time those are aired. <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, it is it is rather, it's not an easy league for me to follow at that moment, I have to say. So. Hey, okay. Uh, what what I, I, I think the MLS is growing. I like it. It has still more potential to come. And then, as you know, there's a 2026 World Cup being hosted here along with Mexico and Canada. But, you know, there's no relegation. Um, they have kind of like this East and West conference that they try to do with like NBA and NFL and MLB. Uh, so I always, I've always felt that, this is just my opinion, but I've always felt that the Americans try to Americanize the sport and not the other way around. Like, not make football yeah. because you know what I mean? I mean the way I see it is um it needs to be to be worth it there needs to be an investment and they need the security so you cannot have relegation right right and it's kind of the American system and I know that this with the east west I totally get what you mean but I think the country is so freaking huge in order to grow some rivalries. I mean, I think if they wouldn't, if Seattle wouldn't have ever, there would not be a Portland Timbers in there. There would not be, Van no Vancouver Whitecaps would be up there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. 
the same oh, thing that I always say when FIFA said that MLS should play with the European calendar, you know, start in fall and end in spring. It's also mm -hmm. not very re realistic giving the... So, there you are. I just cut off and then I don't know what how I can get in again. <laughs> no, well, you're good. No worries. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the MLS is definitely growing. Um, I do follow it here and there. Not as much as European football. Uh, and uh, I hope it gets better. Like, I just hope... Uh, like the national team, for example, um, you, you're definitely seeing a rise in the national team level. They, they've been playing amazing lately. They have this project so established. Uh, the way they've been performing, I feel like, man, these guys can probably win a, a World Cup way before Mexico. You know? Well, see about that. I mean, I know the U.S. have a pretty good national team at the moment, but I think it still mm -hmm. has to click. A little bit, but yes. even when players are playing, I think there's a good chance uh, that they do something. And you know, the financial backing would be there. To be mm -hmm. honest, that mm -hmm. do something. and I, I really, would say, you know, uh, having lived there, I, I consider them my one of my uh, family teams that I follow in a way. So I always cool, cool. My daughter was born in the U.S., so she is. She's always saying she I, I'm the American of the family, so she's always <laughs> nice, nice. So yeah, um, I, it, it'll be interesting to see uh, how how the US will develop. I think that MLS uh, probably needs to. What I would like to see is that they really focus on local talent. Yes, keep local talent, uh, have incentives that they keep that one, and I think that, that way you can move further. And also, I always have to have the feeling they're trying too much to compete with Max, with the Liga Mexis. Yes, yes. Way, which I'm not sure is the right strategy there, because completely different market. I mean, they that those established clubs, there's an established all audience, and I always find that the Mexican Liga, at, at least from an outsider's point of view, they very well work on their own. Mm. But the international reach is not really there. I would agree with that, yes. Yes. Um, this is a perfect segue, kind of cutting across to the Mexican League, because mm -hmm. uh, this other jersey I have here is one of my favorite uh, ones that I have in my collection. Really. And um, this is from Club America, yes. uh, one of the biggest clubs in Mexico, from Mexico City. Uh, it's my favorite club, personally. Mm -hmm. And this is a 2013 third kit. And um, I just love this V-check here, the lovely yellow, blue, and red colors that come with it from the club's colors. On the back, it has one of our most famous strikers, Chucho Benitez, Ecuador mm -hmm. player. Unfortunately, he passed away. Um, yeah. But uh, this is a lovely kit that I have. Uh, the bimbo, I could do without the bimbo, but, you know. What well, is bimbo, by the way? I always want to ask that. Oh. It, it's a bread company. Bre okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so bimbo. But yeah, this is, for me personally, because I, I love and support this club, my favorite jersey in my collection. It's yeah, it's, nice. I like it's it. really beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely um, beautiful. I think the Mexican League is above the MLS at the moment. Um, but there's so much administration-wise um, that I feel that has been affecting the league a lot lately. Uh, mm -hmm. They did away with relegation, personally, here. Um, I feel like they're trying to collaborate with the MLS and take similar ideas that the MLS have and implement it in the Mexican league. And I think that just doesn't go with it. Cause like you said, they're, they're their own different marketing. Um, so I'm not for that uh, per se, personally. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just think the Mexican league uh, hasn't really done much sports wise. They're more looking at things financially, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. No, but but that, that's just my opinion. 
Yeah, I mean, I see a little bit from that from the outside. I'm by no way an insider. I mean, I know the main Mexican clubs and so on, of course. Uh, but I always feel that it could increase its outreach. I mean, I what I remember is, didn't they once join the um, Copa Libertadores? Or was this? Yeah, they did. They used to perform in the Copa Sudamericana and la Copa Libertadores. Exactly. But they backed out of that um, for many reasons. And I think that harms their reputation, their image, especially for Mexican clubs, because a lot of Mexican clubs that went and performed out there gave a good show. Like they reached semifinals, finals, quarterfinals. Um, I actually think that would be the one thing to uh, personally to build a more global brand because I mean, the Libertadores, I mean, I watched the final. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I, you know, South American soccer, yes, uh, if there's something, it's not that great to watch, but I think if there's, uh, uh, if there is a bigger market, and I think the Mexican league pulls financially way more weight than most of the Brazilian and Argentinian leagues, for instance, if there yeah. can be a synergy found, and I think for me, this is so natural. I always also find that there's Commodore and CONCACAF. I honestly would like the two to merge in a way because it would make the Americas a much more competitive environment. Yeah, um, I totally agree with that. Would and you know then you would have a Copa. I mean, the Copa America in 2016 was great. I mean, was great in the in the sense you had uh, the best North American teams, you had the best South American teams, you had a proper tournament. The Copa America to me is from format wise always a joke because you have three groups, so you have now. A huge five groups where uh, four out of five advance. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. And then you have the guest teams, which uh, as long as they're from the Americas, I can live with them. But if uh, Japan or Qatar or what uh, or Australia are competing at the Copa America, I always find this a little bit weird, and I always uh, root for them to be eliminated as quickly as possible because I only want to see South American teams there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I. I think they invite them so they can have equal amount of groups, you know, because, exactly. yeah, there's only 10 nations there and then they, they want to make 12. And, and again, the Mexican national team is no longer partaking in that. Hence the Japan, the Qatar, Australia. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I really think if, if you had, if, if Congolf and Commonwealth could combine, that, is okay. that would be an awesome tournament, to be honest. Because that, yeah. that, that would be a tournament that I, I probably will be more interested in that I'm interested in Copa America right now. Because let's face it, the Gold Cup is a little bit of a joke tournament. Yes. Yes, unfortunately. And I always is. feel a little bit sad for that because I always think this should be one of the tour, 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 tournaments to watch out for. But it's also, yeah, when is US playing Mexico? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, and, and you know, um, the Coca Cup kind of schedules schedules and sets up the tournament so that it kind of typically ends up being U.S. versus Mexico in the final for the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Exactly. Which, which for me is like, okay, I get it, but it, it's uh, entertaining. It's a great event. So for me, when Jamaica makes it or, you know, Canada pulls an upset, I'm more happy of that than the typical U.S.-Mexico <laughs> final. That's, by the way, speaking of Canada, that's another jersey. I know that Canada will most likely qualify for for, for, for a World Cup, which I, I, I'm i honest, I'm quite quite happy about. The Canada jersey is one of those that I need to mm. get. They're never, they were always boring so far. And the, even the current one is kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. That, that's why I have not uh, gotten one. I mean, I have a ice hockey jersey, a Canadian one. Mm -hmm. I can show you. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I would probably go get a Jamaican jersey. <laughs> yes. Oh, look at that. I bought that when the Ice Hockey World Cup was 2004 in uh, Austria. Oh, really? Uh, that was the year of the lockout of oh, 2005. It was, it was the, lockout, the NHL lockout. So all the stars suddenly played in Austria. And I was wow. at the time already living in America. But I made exactly this visit at that time. I had three weeks off and I told my brother and my friend, we need to see one match of Canada because 
you know, I love ice hockey, 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 and then we, we, we got tickets for Canada against Sweden, which was just awesome. Six, nice. five, so, and we bought, I bought this jersey downtown. Uh, so this is my Canada jersey, but I want to have a soccer jersey for the next World Cup because it's way too heavy to hang up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I agree. I feel like uh, Canada will definitely qualify. Um, and it'll be great to see him in there. Yeah. It'll be great to see Alfonso Davies running up that left wing, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. As for um, Jamaica, I would love the 98 jersey to have. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a few uh, custom name set kits that I got. Um, yeah. Well, this one here is the third kit uh, from last season of Nike of Roma, their last the last year with Nike. Yeah. Uh, the Lupetto here, uh, this is a beautiful, uh, I love the color. It's a lovely kit. Um, but like I said, it got customized. I got my name <laughs> on the back. Yes. Um, my, my fiance got it for me as my birthday gift. So yeah, uh, you know, cool. That was, that was very nice of her consider it but overall this is a lovely kit i love it i still haven't worn it it still has the tags on it yeah um but i'll, I'll definitely wear it one of these days <laughs> yes <laughs> and um and while i was in new york in 2018 yes yes i got this marseille jersey for their anniversary 120 years and while i was there i also <laughs> got it customized and uh again i haven't worn it but uh i should but it's a lovely uh, counterpart. Yes. <laughs> yeah that, that's the home jersey of that season right exactly yeah yeah, it, uh, uh, yeah. i don't want to put put your french now 120 anniversary it says on there but oh yeah no, I, I can't butcher it either <laughs> and now you know, actually uh i studied french a long time ago and there's another channel, Amour du Maillot, and I'm um, um, a guy from, he lives in south of France that I, I regularly communicate with, and I want to do a similar video with him like I do now with you. Oh, and wow. Okay. Most of his videos he posts is in French, but it's kind of my um, weekly French lesson to kind of, yeah. can I understand, uh, still after 20 years of not really speaking French anymore, so <laughs> it's... Yeah, I I took French in college, so I know a little bit of it. Mm. I can read it. I can read it way better, in my opinion, than I can speak it. But yeah. uh, but um, I also I watch Ligue 1 in French, just so I can mm -hmm. hear the. Oh, you know, that's the, a big boost to language yeah, still. And um, I think this is one of the things uh, I missed it because when uh, I started watching Serie A and La Liga here in Austria. They had this great channel where you could switch between the German commentator and the original one. Or you could have it without commentator. Oh, really? We watched wow. every game in Spanish or in Italian, which is so, which was so cool. I mean, I have no, I mean, I don't speak Spanish. I mean, I was tortured with Latin in school, so I have, can pick up a little bit of Italian and Spanish here and there and with French knowledge, but it was a real boost because I really could follow after a month or so, you could follow the games in the foreign language, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love listening to some Italian uh, commentators when they watch highlights because yeah. I could pick up words here and there because it's similar to Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, but at the rate they speak sometimes, I'm just you're like, what? What is, he, what is he saying? Like, it's too fast for me. <clears throat> for me, Spanish is too fast. Um, I kind of wish they didn't have the Uber Eats and kind of just yeah. left the Marseille flag as it yes. is. Yes, yes. Um, but um, it is what it is. And nah, this is a beautiful one. This is yeah. Puma really goes. Um, Puma really goes all out when it comes to like limited edition jerseys or yeah. special edition jerseys. I've noticed that they tend to do phenomenal job with limited edition jerseys um like borussia dortmund is with puma and they have released so many lovely uh limited edition kits with them and so like puma is the brand for limited kits in my opinion nike nike does some nice ones here and there yeah but i feel like I puma... think are, um 
I mean, and now that Milan is with Puma, I only remember the 120 anniversaries, 20 mm. anniversary shirt, and that was not so great in my opinion. But I know that they, they did quite some special sh uh, shirts, but I think that there are some smaller brands that, especially in Germany, like with the Carnival and Oktoberfest church, or just that are yes. really out there, which I find uh, rather amazing. But yeah, Puma, I mean, this shirt is an absolute beauty, I have to say. Yeah, thank you. You know, you you have that Kern um, Festival jersey. I yeah. love it. Such a lovely kit. W would yeah. you mind sharing it? Yeah, yeah. I uh, have to... Gracias, Oliver. Uh, that's... Ale, Mar Ale Marce. Ale. Yeah, there it is. Wow, look at that. This one I saw last year on the day it was released. And I remember, you know, still joking. This looks funny. And then, you know, I like Kern. And then I was thinking, this might be the best Kern shirt that I can ever get because I... Well, I like Curl and their home shirts are usually white with a little bit of red. And I thought this mm -hmm. is so perfect. And all these little details related to the yeah. card, City of Cologne, it's awesome. And I always love that the carnival shirts, they take the city crest here on the center. Yeah, the, the coat of arms, it's lovely. Exactly. It is so beautiful. And yeah, and then I actually, I went all out. This was, I think, this is the second most expensive shirt that I ever ordered in my life. I went on all out. I got the sponsors, the Bundesliga patch, and then I said, okay, if I get this without a name, it looks stupid. Modest. Modest. <laughs> 27 is my, is my number. And then I saw that Modest is playing, and I said, okay, I'll take him. And what I like with Bundesliga teams is that they have always the club's name. Yeah, they always have it in the back. Uh -huh. On there, and that was another reason, because I didn't want to leave this blank. But this is so lovely, and there's so much detail in there. Uh, this is one of my favorite jerseys that I ever got. And yeah. this, I probably paid too much for it because, meanwhile, I could get it for half price, but not in that specification. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of, and I got it really within a few days. They shipped it rather fast from Cologne. Uh, and yeah, this is absolutely one of my favorite shirts. Uh, yeah, that, that's a lovely kit. I, I love it. Um, I wish I had one myself. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, and as I said, well, I, I really love all the details in there. This is what a great special kit is. You want to yes. have reference to the city. You want to have, I mean, they, uh, it's based on this uh, clown costume that they have in Cologne. Where you just take a little uh, piece of cloth and sew them together. You can actually see the stitches if you look close. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm noticing that just now. Wow. I mean, it's all printed out, but it's kind of, you have the stitches, then there's a drop shadow with it. It's really, really well done. And I absolutely love this one. This is such a beautiful, it's, it's a yeah, that, I agree too. It's a lovely kit. Mm. Thank you for sharing with that. Yeah. yeah. Very, very welcome with that. The only one that was more expensive and that also taught, taught me lesson was this, uh, this one here. Oh, the Napoli. Wow. I bought it, I think, two days after it was released. And it was basically, this was my fear of missing out. Moment where I said, I want to have this one and I overpaid for it. And I, well, I wanted to get actually an Insigne on the back. Then I couldn't when I could order it. And yeah, I paid a lot. I paid for, I paid for shipping. I'm very happy that I have it. It's a beautiful Napoli yeah. jersey. But I feel the next time I rather wait around a little bit and don't give in immediately. So this was, but I am absolutely happy. This is also it's one of the few that I, I still have the tags on. I have not worn it mostly because I wanted to get in double yeah. XL, which would be, this is very tight fitting. So I look like a little bit like a sausage when I wear it. So. <laughs> no, it, it's a lovely kit. I love the little Coppa Italia. Uh, yes. Bad right there, it's lovely, and then Arda, it's called. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. And um, the kind of commemorative to the national team of Argentina for Maradona. Yes, no, it's at least that's it's really, it's really beautiful. And uh, another detail that I didn't realize, and I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up. If you look at the okay. sponsor, there are little dots 
inside to keep the that they're still breathable. Really? I can kind of see them, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really amazing. <laughs> so that 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 was a nice touch. So yeah. It's a really nice shirt, but I probably paid too much for that one. And I yeah, want to see you on the back, which didn't happen, so that's a little bit of a bummer. I, I think might leave. I know. And I hope he chooses the red and black. Oh. <laughs> what 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 do you fit in the system? You got Leal playing great. You have um I think you never Shalom. have enough good players. I mean, I, at the moment, I rather would have Lovic than Insignia. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some fans, so that, but I honestly think neither of those will join Milan because uh, Milan wants to more on the development side of things, and I think they will pick up again some young some youngsters from France. Good. That's what mm. I'm. Uh, I. I personally would like to see him stay and retire there, but uh, I can't blame him if he picks a club like Milan or or but Inter. Or... I actually think he should go up. I always said, if you're a club icon, in it, especially in Italy, you mm -hmm. need to go to a foreign club. That's the one thing that can be forgiven. Because if he were to join uh, another Italian team, he is immediately an outcast in, in Naples. As yeah, not, as no, that's is. true. And that is for me, I mean, uh, I think joining Milan and Inter is maybe a teeny bit more forgivable than joining Juve. Yeah. No, it's just, you know, there's such a huge rivalry between the, the northern part of Italy and the southern exactly. part of Italy. Um, but yeah, Inter and Milan are definitely more forgivable. Juventus, oof, yeah. Well, that's an absolute no call. <laughs> Yeah, that would be awful. I mean, you saw it with Iguain. I mean, even when, when he came with Milan to Naples, he was whistled at every touch. Every time he touched the ball. Yeah. yeah. It was, and I thought, yeah, okay, get over it in a way. But yeah, they are very passionate there. I mean, that's what I love about Napoli. That's yeah, you can't go wrong with Napoli. Fan yeah, base. Their, their fan base is just something else. Making honestly. that crappy stadium. Such an atmosphere, uh, that's something special. That is always underappreciated. Because when you see it live, you always think, oh, the seats back there are empty. No, they're up there and they're making a hell of a noise. I think that's the last thing uh, Napoli needs, a legit modern stadium, like a nice... Almost every team in Italy needs that. That's true, that's true. Yeah. I mean, that's another reason why you went so big, because they... I mean, it's a plastic stadium in many ways, but... They have their own stadium. And yeah, like, yeah. I think Juventus is the only club that owns their own stadium, right? And now Atalanta does too and Udine does too. Mm. Yeah, because a lot of the other clubs, the stadium is either owned privately it, or it's by the state or, you know. Yeah. It's, so. I mean, I followed the project now in Milan. Uh, where it's, it's a bureaucratic chaos. And as much as I would hate to see them, uh, Giuseppe Merza or the San Siro go. Um, well, yeah. it's, it's probably the most impressive stadium in Europe, bar none to me. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it's old. You... I mean, I've never been there, but the stories that I hear, I mean, you want to, you don't want to go for two for the two hours to any uh, bathroom or whatever because it's just disgusting. Really? Yes. Oh. The stadium is kind of a little bit rip. Uh, you know, they try to revamp it every, every now and then, but on the other side, the atmosphere in there is uh, second to none, especially yeah. in the game, because it's really everything is on top of each other. This is the one thing that. But Milan and uh, Inter, they need a new stadium badly if they have any hope of competing on the European stage anymore. But I think if that happens within the next five or five years, we're talking quick. That that would be great. I I would be sad to see the San Siro or the Giuseppe Miazza go. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely. A more modern stadium for these clubs is really, really yeah, important for the growth of of Serie A, Since you know? Comparing Roma, I mean, the stadium project for Roma is another thing that takes forever. 
I know they, they've been talking about that since like 2014, 2015, I think. Estadio mm -hmm. de la Roma, and they have they had blueprints, they have things out, and I think the city just doesn't allow yeah. it. Or the Italian bureaucracy that is just killing it all, and that's yeah. another reason why Serie A, as much as I love this league, uh, it's the league that I most passionately follow. I mean, I'm an Italian. Me too. Um, but that's why they will never reach a high tide again until they get that sorted in many ways. And uh, I mean, for me, it, uh, when, when I read the other day that a bottom team in the Premier League makes more money than any Serie A team. Yeah, yeah. No, I, like one yeah. season alone for Burnley or Southampton in the Premier League, just cash flow wise, Way more yep. than some said, yeah, side. Yes, yes. <laughs> I remember the interface. Well, yeah, the burning motorcycle. Yes, I do. Yes, <laughs> yes, burning motorcycle. Yep. Um, Best so fans. Gonna, <laughs> here'll be my last one, but you know, uh, it's the 1997 1998 PSV Eindhoven jersey. It's the home kit. Um, it's nice. I can't remember where I picked it up. I think it must have been on eBay or something. But uh, it's in decent condition. It does have a lot of pulls, um, you know. But uh, nonetheless, uh, just to have something from the 90s. And then I love collars on a lot of jerseys. Just having something like that from that time period, I just love collecting them personally. And I'm what an Ajax fan. What season did you say? 97, 98? Or... Yeah. I think I have the matching Ajax jersey. <laughs> oh wow! But I have ninety-eight. Nice. But, but 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 it's not here. It's in, in, in my water. But I have the ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Let's see. Uh, no name set. Nothing. No, I cannot find it now. I can show you. I, the only thing I can show this is ninety-six, ninety-seven, Ajax. Look at that Umbro, the collar. Wow. I love it. This is one of my first ever shirts that I got. Uh, this was the time yeah, that I yeah, was yeah. great and I said, I need an Ajax shirt. Yeah. I and have one I have too. Now one of those teams where I, yeah, almost every year. This is the one team where, I, where Adidas is doing an outstanding job. Yes. Every year there's an Ajax jersey that someone wants to have. <laughs> that, uh, that everyone want, wants to have. It's amazing. I... I'm a huge Ajax fan. Um, I've been supporting them for a while now. Um, and I think PSV, and, and I think that every BBC league overall is great. I appreciate it. And like when I saw this online and then, you know, like the vintage Nike tag yeah. and, and the collar, and I was like, I had to get it. Ajax fan or not, I had to get it. <laughs> My PSV shirt is a little bit less. It's classic design, but you know. If the like still other, on there. other little checkers in there. Mm, mm. Which is from the flag and it has Kevin Strutman? Yes. Oh yeah, he came back for another season, right? Yeah, yeah. So Is that before his time in Marseille or after? No, nah, this is before. This is from ten eleven. Oh, right, right. Okay. This was before he even joined Roma, so... Roma, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see now. But that one I picked up last year for, I think, 20 euros. Oh, that's a steal. Nice. I thought it was a total steal. It, it's a really nice shirt. I to I'm totally happy about that one. So, I always like to... When I get those little steals, I'm always happy. Because, I, you know, I always go then... Uh, when I decide, okay, I, I want to cover now Eredivisie also in my videos. Let's look mm -hmm. what is out there. And yeah, Ajax you can get. PSV is a little bit harder. Feyenoord, I have one that I don't really like. <laughs> I would love to pick up a Feyenoord uh, jersey. They have some nice ones, especially the Adidas ones, in my opinion. Yeah, they are really nice. I mean, the one I have is Puma, but it doesn't have a sponsor that I like. But I don't like the template. You, you know what? It reminds me of uh, Slav, Slavia Prague. 
Yes, Slav Slavia Prague has something, has, has, a, has a similar design. Uh, yeah. The nice thing that I do have to say is here, and I'm not sure on the sides here, there are little Fs. I'm not sure if the camera can pick this oh, up. I, I see it, yeah. Yeah, so that's, but uh, I want to have a nicer looking fan or no, not sure, but you know, I said I need one. So let's get this one, but it's not my favorite, so. Fair, there's a, a connection with Austria there because when they won the European Cup, Ernst Happel, the greatest Austrian coach ever, was their coach. Mm, so there's really? a, um, a connection between Feyenoord and Austria because of that. And yeah, I'm a, I'm an Ajax fan, mortal enemy. Uh, you know, there was always a, uh, there, there, there's always an appreciation for Feyenoord, not there. I mean, but you know, I became an Ajax fan more by chance because I really, really liked that team in the nineties. That's that team took me by storm and yeah for sure and Oop. what they're doing lately uh, i think they're the for me they're, they're the most enjoyable champions league team to watch because it's kind of a little bit guilt-free mm. it's a small t yes it's a big team in the netherlands but on the european count because it's a small it's it's at the moment a small team although i hate to say it because ajax is a giant of the european game but they I would are, yeah. so much love them to see the win that thing to just do something different. Like when Porto did in 2004. Mm. Although I still think it's the season that Milan should have won it. But, you know, <laughs> it yeah. was a fresh air to see something different. So, No, and um, I'm just so happy to see Ajax again this year in the Champions League. Top of the table. Um, they... They guaranteed their next round qualification already. Yeah. And um, they look like a serious candidate. You know, they look up there along with the Chelsea's, along with the Bayern Munich. You know, they, they look decent. I Liverpool. Have, I had a work colleague from Amsterdam, and he always said, uh, Ajax always flatters to deceive. And I remember they talking talking before they played Roma last year. And Roma was not doing well. And yeah. Ajax was kind of flying high. And I said, this Roma team, Ajax should be able to beat. I really feel that Ajax uh, will go over Roma. And, you know, it was kind of a little bit for me. Yeah, I like both teams in in a way. Uh, so, yeah. But I really had a feeling that Ajax will do something. Now, nah. Roma, <laughs> Roma yeah. eliminated. As you come and say, I told you, Ajax flatters to deceive all the, all, all the time. When you think they get something going, nope. Well... I, I honestly hope that's not the case and they can make a, another strong push, you know? Yes, I wonderful. really hope. But it is also very draw-dependent, I think. They need to play yeah. them. Yeah. And yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I, I just hope they go far. Because um, it, it, it shows, you know, like, you don't need money to some extent to compete. No. You, need a so. good, you need a good structure and a good philosophy and... Uh, there are examples of that exactly and yeah. they are for me the premier example in a way that uh you really uh if you have a good structure and uh the one thing that i always say is that ajax coaches don't travel well they mm. work there is hard i think the last uh, great ajax coach that worked for at another club was louis van Hal. yes yes everyone else when is with uh, frank de boer uh peter, de boer. Boer. Um, peter bose <laughs> Uh, Ronald Koeman, they Ronald did well at Ajax, they built something there, and then they went abroad and they sucked because the system is is really tailor-made for the Dutch mm -hmm. uh, for the Dutch environment, and it is not yes. only the coach. That's why I think when uh, you know when the United fans all said, now we want uh, Eric Ten Hag, and I'm thinking, be careful what you wish for. He is great for Ajax, but that yeah. might not be it. He needs the entire surroundings. I mean, uh, if you're a United fan, okay, take Van der Sar. He's a United legend. Uh, and maybe get the whole system over to United. But then you need to completely change your uh, uh, setup there. Whereas Ajax is really, we are taking the best Dutch talent and the best youngsters from across the world. And we pick really players that are very invested into Ajax, like Dusan Taric. Yeah, yeah. Dusan Taric. Great, and that gels as a team. Yeah, you know, that, that's a good point. Uh, I feel like Van der Sar, at least outside of the Dutch league or the Dutch 
competition. I feel like Van Dessar and Mark Overmars aren't given enough credit. They've yep. done a hell of a job in yes. the board. And um, they've even been able to, like, spend some money. Hence, bringing back the Licked. Not the mm -hmm. Licked, I'm sorry. Um, uh, um, Davy Blink. Blink, uh, yep. Davy Klassen. Mm -hmm. um, Ale from West Ham. They were able to spend some money on that. Um, uh, Steven, Steven Newhouse. Steven yeah. Newhouse. Uh, so, strange. like, I mean, this was Feyenoord is doing really well at the moment, but I thought when they got Berghaus from Feyenoord, I thought this is a transfer that you A, don't do, and B, yeah, okay, here you are, we take your best player. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's the thing, you know, like, you have this philosophy with uh, the academy players, yeah. you have this style of playing that's, you know, spearheaded by Ten Hag, but mm -hmm. now you kind of have a financial muscle. Exactly. And you're able to bring, and so, you know, that's all Mark Overmars, that's all Van de Sar, and to me, it's like, these are the good years right now. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. I, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, let's see how, how they will, I would love it if they, if they could make it. Um, yes, I agree. I mean... How they got, got, got eliminated by Spurs is still beyond me because that was that was a fluke. I agree. I mean, you know, um, my respects and, and support for Pochettino, but I agree. Yeah, I agree. So this was, um, and you know, I don't want to make this now a whole talk because we want to do jerseys. But I, if Spurs don't reach the Champions League final. Pochettino leaves sooner, and I think Spurs is not in such a mess because that's cha that Champions League final clouded everything a little bit because they were already not good in that season. And then yeah. the Champions League, they had that run and that kind of, yeah. But, you know, let's yeah, keep but, it with jerseys. <laughs> um, I was wondering, would you mind showcasing your Valencia kit back there? Of course. That's a lovely kit. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Wow. I, I was looking for a Valencia jersey. I always said I want to have this type of jersey. Yeah, same. Um, I think then two years later they brought out what I think is an even better one where they had like the, the true the, all the four red stripes, but I love the colors. The one thing that drives me nuts with this one, and it doesn't look at the first part, there's two tones of yellow. Oh, really? I... The yeah. sides here and the sleeves are much brighter yellow. Oh, okay, I see it now. Out of the shirt, dress me crazy. Ah, I, I, I see it now. But you know what? Like, if you didn't point it out, I wouldn't have nah. not caught it. I I caught this like after uh, when I was wearing the second or third time ever, and I saw myself in the mirror. It has the good. I got a guy from classic football shirts, and it was the only way Figuli. that I could get in my size. And I said, okay, Figuli. I don't have anything for or against him, but I take it uh, with the names that it looks really nice and it's also without sponsor, but it's a really nice shirt. It's 15, 16, and it has this weird, I mean, it's, you see it in a, on a sleeve, this dot pattern. Thank you, Oliver, for that. Yes, I see it now. Which is basically a cloth where they got the holes. Maybe I have to uh, turn the light a little to see. Oh, yes, the, I can see it now. It's wow. very interestingly done. I love that. That's a lovely touch to that. And they have the same thing down here on the bottom. So, mm. so yeah, this to me is what Valencia should always have as a, as a way or a third kit. So, I agree. Yeah, that that's a lovely kit. I I don't have any Valencia jerseys. I would love to have one of those in my collection. Yeah, um, this, is absolute, this is an absolute classic. And uh, you can find them here, here and there, but uh, they're not that easy to come, to, come, to come by. And I actually, this was one that I, I knew I had to pounce and buy yes. at this point. So, yeah. You know, um, I think it's the 2002 or to the 2004 that's similar to that with, with the Toyota branding. Yeah, there, there was one like that as well. I mean, there is one great one from the 90s by Luan with this dark blue with uh -huh. this black in there. I think it was 96-ish, 97-ish. 
Mm. Look it up. This is one of the greatest Valencia shirts ever, but uh, impossible to get at the moment. Made uh, by, okay. I, made by I think Lord I know what you're Cooper. talking about, though. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, thanks for sharing with that one. Appreciate it. Let Lovely see. jersey. Another one that I've seen, so I've been talking French, that I really love. Mm -hmm. Not nah, oof. Yes, I love that. It was released this year, and I was happy. Uh, I got it for only 60. Never worn in match, unfortunately. But this was the uh, almost exact remake of the last one that won the eighth, their eighth title uh, 20 years ago. Yeah, past. okay. I, I uh, love the vintage badge on it. Absolutely. And the story goes, in 2000, I was in Nantes. Mm. And at that time, I was only uh, collecting scarves. And I have oh. this crest. And I said, I always, if I want to have a non I want to have one with this crest. And, you know, at the club store back, back then, I, I didn't have the means. And I saw this shirt. It was made by Lecoq Sportif. It's yes. a slightly different cut, but more, it's, more, or it's more, more or less the same shirt. And then, yeah, I didn't get it. It's impossible to get at the moment, at least for a reasonable price. You can get remakes, which I don't want to get. And then Macron came out with this one. I said, okay, that's my Nantes jersey. I always, Nantes is one of the, those teams that I always liked a little bit. I, I remember them Me playing too. In the Champions League in 96 in the semifinal against Juventus with those awesome uh, green and uh, yellow striped jerseys against yeah. uh, and, and and it's also, I always had this in mind. Beautiful stadium. And when I saw this, I knew I had to get this one. And this is... No, that's a lovely kit right there. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. And, you know, Macron is probably one of my favorite manufacturers at the moment. They are doing is, such quality work. Is, uh, is Macron French, English? Yeah, he is Italian from Bologna. Oh, Bologna, uh, Bologna is the original uh, Macron team. In a way. Ah, yes. Okay. It makes sense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's no, pretty, you know, um, uh, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that that makes sense. Now, thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. um, I I've grown fascinated with Nantes because um, I like looking at clubs' history, and uh, when you learn a club's history, you kind of appreciate them more. And uh, I don't know if you're aware with um, Henri Michel. He's like yep. a legendary player yep. for the club. Mm -hmm. So when, when when I learned about him and his time in Nantes and and all that, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. I, I like it. And, uh, yeah, I like the club, the badge, the colors. Um, I, I don't like the badge, uh, the modern take that they have right now. It's it's not that great. It's like a Juventus type of look. Yeah, but better than Juve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Juventus one. That, well, look, that one has aged remarkably well. Yes. I remember when I saw it, I thought, what? What is this? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look weird anymore. There you you grow fond of it? Not necessarily fond, but it it is uh, it, it's iconic in many ways. It is more mm -hmm. iconic than the classic Juve crest in many ways, because it is you can draw it by hand. It's very easy. Uh, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is like, I I guess they try to give it a modern look and. The more simpler, the better. Yeah. I don't know. I do like some, you know, having her. I mean, I, my, the judgment for me is still out for the new Intercrest, for instance. Right, right. Uh, I know it is uh, the, the first impulse of everyone. When it's a change, is to ridicule it. Or I'm saying, what is this? Because it's so radically different. And we, we as humans, we like familiar stuff. So that's why when something weird come, comes out, that that's why I don't start my jersey re reviews until a few months into the season, until like I, I have grown used to the shirts. I'm still on the side that I think they cheapened the look a little bit for Inter, but it mm. might actually work out well. But for you, this worked remarkably well. I, I literally, I don't hate it anymore. At first, I completely mm. hated it. it, it, it I said, this is, this is an abomination, but especially when they took the Juventus away from the top. It's just not yeah. okay. I have to say, it's a very, very strong look. I mean, this is one of the few steps they have done right in the last five years. I mean, yeah, you're right. I, I've grown used to it, um, but I would much rather prefer 
the, the badge with the bull on it, like the 2005-2006 logo. Well, it, I do agree, but I have to say that the Juventus badge per se was never that great, especially the last iteration. Uh, the previous one, yes, but it was always, you know, way too in. I mean, the, what, where the clubs are now kind of called is this digital age where you need to have simpler lines because it, you need to stand up. You need, it, it needs to work that you zoom in and, and now detail gets lost. You need to zoom mm -hmm. out. So it needs to be always recognizable. That's, that's the main. And the other thing is, I hate that they all go now circular, Chris, but of course you go circular because that's the one that maximizes your area. If you oh, go crest side by side, a circular crest, if they are the same height, a circular crest will always be bigger. I see. It makes sense. Yeah, there's a huge trend right now of just circle badges lately. Yeah, and it's because of that. It's because of the digital age, because it is much easier to have something circular uh, because it transfers better onto every material. Personally, I don't really like it. I mean, I'm waiting until Manchester United comes out with a circular one. For Milan, for instance, it would be easy. Just take the center circle. Yeah, but see, seeing Milan, oh, uh, but I, I it, it, wouldn't look, it doesn't look right. I mean, um, Milan had this wonderful away jersey, I think 1415, where they used the Casa Milan logo. Ah, I see. Which is basically the circle and a little bit uh, there. And to be honest, it doesn't look like a Milan shirt, shirt, shirt to me. I love the shirt. It's white. It has just on the bottom a red and a black stripe. It looks absolutely beautiful design-wise. Mm -hmm. But with that crest, it doesn't look like a Milan shirt to me. And that's uh, one reason why I have not gotten it yet. Although, meanwhile, I probably would want to have it. But back then, I said, nah, this doesn't look right. And I know there was even yeah. a new badge for Milan once in uh, rumors, and it didn't look right. <laughs> Yeah, like when, when Manchester City presented their new logo, I was just so used to the eagle and the stars. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. But if you look back at their history, they had that logo previously. So it makes sense that they brought it back. There it makes total sense. And there it's, it's really great. Um, I, as, as, as I said, with new logos play, playing around, it is always hit, hit and miss. For instance, if you look at the new, now this is very obscure, Metz from France. Yes. The, the new one is an abomination as it can be. <laughs> mm. There, I think, I mean, I, and I know they ask the fans, they want, it's, it's, basically, it's basically the cross, but a little bit uh, cut and it, does, it looks out of shape. And then there's just FC Metz there and the dragon that they had on there, they kind of let go. And I know that yeah. the original one was that they had the dragon and the cross is small, but the fans want to have the cross. But it looks so like made by a five-year-old that I'm thinking. No, yeah, I, I would prefer the old logo for Mets too, because the the new one is just. Yeah. Like but... if if you're not familiar with the club, it doesn't. To me, it doesn't translate. This is yes. a football club. You know, yes, just... absolutely. It, it, it does not look in any way appealing. I mean, I know Cross of Lorraine, whatever. It looks awful. It looks absolutely awful. And, you know, I do... Oh, really? <laughs> when, I, um, when I do my tables for my videos and so on, you know, every year I, I try to see what are the new logos and I see this logo and I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> what have you done here? But then yeah, yeah. there's another in France. Uh, there have happened quite a few, new, a few new logos in France. Um, Stade Reims actually did it quite nice, I have to say. The S and the R interlock. Oh, yes. With the little crown, right? With the little crown. That actually, I mean, get right. rid of the bird mark below, but that just, just by itself, that looks actually quite classy. I and agree. it's simple. And um, have you seen the new Toulouse? They're, they're in League Duh, but. The Toulouse nah, badge. It's also, I have not seen that one. It, it's also in a circular yeah. badge. Um, it's okay. Mm. You can see that it's uh because it has symbolic Toulouse things yeah. around it, uh, so you can tell it's a football club. Um, but I would prefer the old one to that one personally. But uh, yeah, that's to, also a circle badge. I have to look at that uh, because you say mm. Toulouse. Uh, the mm. French guy that I'm coming, uh, he's living near Toulouse. Oh really? But um, Toulouse is a rugby town. 
rugby, uh, rugby town. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, where we had this, where, where we said the other day, um, it is so funny when you think about it. Uh, all the soccer teams, you always think that they are the big cities, but in France, Toulouse is the fourth largest city. But since they don't have a proper soccer team, they, yeah, of it, you would, I mean, then. I personally, knowing France, I knew Toulouse is a big city. Uh, but by that's no, <laughs> no one would guess that Toulouse is a huge because but they are all rugby. They have uh, probably the premier rugby team in France. He claims Europe. Oh, so okay. I don't know club rugby. So, but uh, yeah, I was not aware of that. Interesting. Interesting. So uh, the south of France is very big on the rugby, and Toulouse is the rugby team or the yeah. rugby town, and that's why it's kind of um, the soccer team is a little bit shoved to the side. I see. Okay, that makes sense. Wow. Um, like, have you seen the Deportivo Alaves? That yeah, that was yeah. awful. Yeah, I know. Like, I know that the other one was just a little bit uh, squiggly lines and so on, but I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I love the previous badge myself too. I thought that was like very unique. Mm -hmm. That was um, the new one. Yeah, okay. But then, uh, yeah, if it was just the flag, I would be fine. Yeah. Uh, but, speak, but, but speak of which, I mean, there, there are two Spanish teams that, especially uh, for the digital age, I would recommend a little bit changing. That is Granada and Celta Vigo because it's so elongated. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it's, it's an okay. absolute. It's a little hard. I mean, I love this, the cross on the Celta Vigo. I mean, Celta is secretly my favorite team in Spain, and I don't have a jer jer jersey of theirs yet, which is a shame. Mm. But there's something about Celta I, I always like, especially now Iago Aspas and so on. But I remember even back uh, in the 2000s when they had Most Boy, they were a really fun team to watch. Uh, I like Celta the Vigo too. They were kind, uh, kind of one of the one of the teams that I like, but. Um, their crest is so thin, if they would ever play in Europe uh, and you see them beside a circular crest, it vanishes. And yeah. uh, uh, almost the same thing. It's very, very, very long. So Yeah, I have seen the Granada one. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. So there, yeah. I hate to break it to the fans of those teams, but I think they are in for a rebrand. <laughs> They're in for a rebrand, yeah. You, you know, and like, Fiorentina this season, they brought back like their 70s, yeah. but that's also a circular, right? It's also circular, but they still have the old one. I mean, uh, that one, I know this is an 80s crest and everyone... Oh, 80s, yes. Or oh, 70s, 80s. I don't, I, I, I don't know. I'm never, I mean, I want to have one of those Fiorentina shirts and I'm looking at the yellow one especially. Mm. Nice. Uh, I also have a purple one, so... Um, but I'm, ne I'm not sure if that uh, logo... The lily that turns into an F, whether this is genius or whether it's ugly. It is so uh, personally. It looks odd. It looks odd in, 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 in a way. Personally, yeah, it, it's odd, but personally, I like it. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely want. I. This is one of the things. I mean, I, I'm slowly making a list for the next year. Jerseys I would like to have, and that Fiorentina. The yellow one, probably more than the white one, is on my list. I'm seated on the copper side. Last season's red with the cross on there is also one that I'm kind of always have an eye on. But, you know, let's see where it will develop. I have said I, I, I will scale back next year. Mm. Uh, we just said last year before. I mean, last year I, I bought a total of 50 jerseys. For the year? For the year. And I made this video of the top 10 jerseys I want to have. I said, I want to make it dedicated. I want to make a shopping list. 10 that I have and then my 10 favorite, favorite, favorite from previous season. And Okay, that will be a nice round list. Can spend a little bit more. Yeah, I'm at 70 now. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, and, that's, and that, I have to say, when I think about that, that's too many. <laughs> personally, I've been cutting back on my jerseys. I have yeah. gotten a few this year. Uh... I told myself, like, if I really want a jersey and I have the budget for it, then okay, sure, maybe I'll get it. Uh, but, but I told myself, like, no more. That's it for now. You know, get through all your jerseys, you know, like on my YouTube channel, like get through all my jerseys first. Mm -hmm. Once I do that, then I can start thinking of purchasing a jersey. 
Yeah, so I, mean, I want to complete the backgrounds for my league videos and so on. So I want to have that I can have here all Spanish or all French and so on. So I want to finish that one in a way. But I want to get to, 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 to a point where I just need to occasionally pick one up. Like if a team gets relegated, okay, pick a new one up and then really go again for uh, jerseys that I really like. But I actually enjoy at the moment this branching out to all kinds of teams, whether I like them or I don't like them, just have this uh, variety. Right. Right. Back up there. Um, but yeah, I want to get back to really getting, uh, maybe having less and uh, getting but jerseys that I really, really like. So that's, uh, I mean, yep. I was able to pick up two jerseys. Let me go bring them really quick. Give me a minute and yep. I'll show them to you really quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. I'm back. Um, so I went to like a little swap me like um, secondhand, you know, uh, stores. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to pick up this 2006 um, Peru jersey. It's extra Ooh. large, but it's a very fine condition. I would pick up this Peru jersey from 2006. Very, in very nice. fine condition. Very nice. And uh, I got it for three dollars. <laughs> um, it's extra large. The brand is um, Valon. Valon, yeah, it's Peruvian. I have I have a Valon shirt that I bought in Peru. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, and, but it was the two thousand eight, two thousand nine, and I still am a little bit mad at myself because they had the home and the away jersey. I just got the home. The away jersey was like a red with a white. Yeah. Yeah, but that, I, you know, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Like for three dollars, I was like, yeah. I'll get it. I'll definitely get it. Yeah. I'm not gonna pass that up. And then this one here, I think it's the 2012, 13. No, Man United it's home 14, 15. Oh, 14, 15. Thank you. Ta da. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. I. I love. I. Uh, you know, it's just really tiny collar, but. Yes. I love colors. The button's nice. Um, it's a home kit. I don't have any... I typically don't have a lot of big club jerseys. Like, I don't have Barca. I don't have yeah. Real Madrid. I don't have Bayern Munich. I don't have... Mm -hmm. uh, so this was, like, one of my first big clubs in, from England, for example. Uh, but the, the downfall is um, it's a custom name set. It says Milo on the back. So, how much did you pay for it? $15. When you said you paid for the Euro Peru shirt three dollars, I was I was thinking exactly about this shirt because I picked it up for five. Oh Euro. wow! Yeah, because oh um, my <laughs> Tom Tom right? <laughs> but I said it will only be hanging at maybe at one time. I will try to remove the name set. I will want to try that. <laughs> Me too. I mean, it's it's legit Premier League, you know. Name set, but yep. And then um, I even got it with the Premier League winners. Oh wow! Now my, my doesn't they, have it. But, this um, is kind of where I said, okay, I have the, I have those patches, and then yeah, I can live with that. Adrian, and sometimes I remove it for five euros. There's nothing lost here. Yeah. Now it's, for, it's for fifteen, you know. Uh, I saw it, and then I was like, okay, well, I had to make sure it was legit, so I Googled, yeah. you know, and um, it was legit, so I was like, for 15, I'm not a big Man U fan, but no, we I'll need take it, but It's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> That's so hilarious that my yeah, I thought this was really funny, <laughs> because it's a, it really, you show me the Peru shirt, and I'm thinking, yeah. Well, one of my cheap pickups that I had the United shirt hanging right there, and I say, okay, then you pull out the same shirt and have the same name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, um, great pickups. I probably wouldn't wear the man new one because it doesn't fit me and I'm not the big yeah. support, but to have it in the collection and to showcase it, yeah, for sure. Exactly. Um, 
I'm not I'm not too big on national team jerseys, even though I do have a few. I have this one. I have the Scotland jersey. I have a German national team home jersey. Um, I think that's it. I'm not that big on national team jerseys per se, personally. Um, but if you would like it, Roland, I can I can give it to you and ship it out for you, and you can have it. Oh, this is this would be awesome. This is, I love this Peru shirt absolutely. Yeah, it. I mean, it's extra large, but you know, I don't know. You know. And you know, Peru is another country that I count among my. Yeah, I I had the same tag for the. It's another family country because. Uh, one of my best friends. I was twice in Peru and twice an Austrian guy got married to a Peruvian girl. Oh yeah. Once my one of my best friends from school and then my brother. He is what? Is to a Peruvian. So I, Peru is a family national team that we that I support. It's always one. Austria is not there, but Peru is there. Yeah, Peru, Peru. Yeah, lately, you know. I've grown uh, very interested in Peru. They have a great general manager, uh, Ricardo Gareca. Yes. I like him as a manager, as a coach, I should say. He's, I, I feel like he makes his clubs pay, play attracting football. And yeah. he's been there for like the last three, four years. So, No, Peru is really fun and I really hope they make it to the next World Cup as well. So, so part of the reason was why I wanted to get it and then for $3, you know, it's a steal. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. Yeah. I mean, Thank I have you. to say I'm... While I have not focused a lot on my club shirts, uh, originally I, I was definitely more on the national team. I always find national teams very fun mm. because you have no sponsors on there. You have True. different nationalities, and I have a very, very soft spot for African national teams. If oh, they, okay. they can have such great jerseys with like um, the 2010 Puma range with all the animals on there. Yes. It's one of my favorites ever. Uh, so I... I and one of my, I mean, I have not no, no national team churches here because they're all uh, in where their kids are sleeping now. <laughs> so, but um, one of my favorite churches is the Mali shirt from 2019 FDA Way shirt, kind of silvery with a big eagle on front. This is right, right. And also that I was able to get it because I saw it. And this was one of the things you, I could, you could not get it at any website. And then I was, I, I remember I was falling kind of, while for falling asleep, I had the idea. Okay, they're manufactured by Airness. Maybe there's an Airness store. And with my last remains of French, I could figure out the Airness store, which is a French a store uh, founded by people from Mali. Mm. And they're very, very niche. And it's not the first one that pops up in Google. Oh. But I found and then I, I just see. had to roll my eyes to my wife and say, can I please have it? <laughs> it was only 60 euros, so only, but you know. This, sure, was sure. At, this was at the time before I had a budget. Now I have a budget, so I have to start. Good, good. So, yeah. And I actually, on purpose, I reduced my budget for the next year. Because, mm. uh, you know. The kids well, it's are coming out pulling quickly. the eyes when they see another parcel coming. Oh, nicht schon not, not again a football shirt for you. <laughs> when do we get more toys? And they have they have so many. I mean, the the room behind that is the children's room behind yeah. that all in. Mm. No, I I appreciate national team jerseys from from Africa myself too. A lot of Cameroon home jerseys are very nice. Um, I like some Morocco kits. Those are yeah. awesome. I like some uh, some Algerian kits, and I like uh, some Cote d'Ivoire kits. Yes. Um, uh, but like I said, I'm not the biggest national team guy when it comes to jerseys. Uh, there is a Soviet Union jersey that I would mm -hmm. love to have. Yeah. And, uh, that that's a in a Yugoslavia jersey the other day pop up, which. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. If you would have me choose, I think I would prefer to get a goalkeeper kit over a yeah, national kit. kit. Nah, I'm I'm the other way. I mean, I totally love I love my national teams. As for African shirts, my personally, my personal, um, I don't want to say holy grail, but mm -hmm. I have never seen it. Mm -hmm. 
2010 Angola shirt, also by Puma. 2010 Angola? Huh. 2010 Angola. It has the typical Angola, it's red with the black and the yellow striping, but all in brush effect, and it has a huge antelope. Oh, I don't think on the shoulder. It. Look that one up. That is one of those shirts that I don't want to say necessarily Holy Grail, because Holy Grail for me would be like a Milan Centenary shirt or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, or one of the 90s Holland, uh, early 90s Holland shirts, or the 98 yeah. Argentina away. That would be kind of... Ho but as it, when it comes to African shirts, that is one that I would absolutely love to have. But, yeah. Okay, I'll definitely check that one out. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks awesome. And you yeah, know, Angola is a small country, but they've been once in the world, so we got to see. For sure, for sure. Yeah. And it is getting kind of late around here. <laughs> yeah, no, I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, I think I'll let you go, Roland. Thank you so much for- I would love to stay longer, but I feel I, I better, but let's end it on something. Uh, what's, can you, sh uh, what's your favorite shirt in your collection? My favorite shirt? Yeah, um, I have a few, uh, but just personally, I guess I'd have to go with this one here, the, the Club America jersey. This one here. I, since it's my favorite team that I love to support, um, this design is beautiful. Um, this V here is kind of like an homage to the late 80s. Yeah, yeah, I know that. It's great. Yeah. So, so yeah, and the fact that it has the name set with you mm -hmm. on the back, I'll have to go with this one just because it's um, personal. <laughs> well, shall I show you mine? I mean, it's very, yeah. very. If, if you're a follower of me, you know which one it is. It's yeah, I kind of have an idea. I watch it every day. Oof. Wow, look at that. That is a lovely, yeah. That, that would be a holy girl for me when it comes to national teams. To be honest, and the kicker is, this was a gift from my aunt. Mm. I was in Italy and bought it. I was 12 years old when I got this one. And I used it in gym class. I was wearing it like crazy <laughs> uh, for years. And I think five or six years ago, they showed a video uh, from the guys from Classic Football Shirts where they said, yes. you know how you recognize a player issue and a replica? The player issue has green to blue. Oh. And so you have one. That's the first one. <laughs> hey, that's legit. Awesome. So, yeah, it's my first one. And it's still one that, yeah. No, it's a beautiful kit, man. I, I love, I, I love that Italy badge. Yes. Um, even though it's a circle. <laughs> I absolutely love the the shiny material. Uh, yeah. it, it, it there's still a lot of cotton in in there. It is just awesome. This one, I really, really. That is one of those uh, where uh, whatever I get, it's like the first hit that you have. You can never reach that high again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I. I love it. This is my. Still my favorite. I, I have to, I know, I'm trying now uh, on Instagram and on my other social, I'm very bad at, at social media, to be honest. But I'm trying now to chronologically post all my jerseys. Yeah, uh, I saw that. I am at number six, I think, uh, uh, and I still have to post number seven or, or whatever. And yeah, these are the, so. Will more will come, but you know, when I have to yeah. pass, Pictures need to be taken, but yeah, I had fun chatting with I you. I had fun too. Um, hopefully, we could we can do it again in the future. That'd be great. I want I wanted to do some series like this with other fellow collectors as well, some of which you know probably as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this was kind of a test run for me. <laughs> so, so great, see. great, same, same. Mm -hmm. So um, again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I hope you can do it again. Much. Thanks to everyone who tuned in and and interacted. Uh, it means a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, have a lovely evening. Have a good night. And um, take it easy, Roland. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. Thanks so much. Yeah. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. 
Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day. Bye.